Hello everybody, my name is Gnome Huts, and you're watching my video where I talk about how I use references and some tips that I have for learning anatomy. You might have noticed that my mic quality is a little bit different, good or bad, I'm not sure, let me know. That's because I did actually get a microphone, except it's one of those shitty headphone mics, but that's all I can afford right now. I'm trying to get an apartment. My commissions are open, so go ahead and message me on any platforms if you want. My prices are pretty cheap, so it shouldn't be that bad. So with that out of the way, here's some old art of mine so you guys can see how bad I was at anatomy. I'm not going to go into the exact issues with this, but, you know, it's bad. Feel free to make fun of my old art down below. I make fun of it every single day that I'm alive. The way I went about learning anatomy was probably not the best way. In fact, I don't really necessarily recommend it to certain people, but it did help me, so it might help somebody out there with a brain like mine. I get art block when my art isn't what I want it to look like. I feel myself getting stuck, and that usually means that there's something I need to fix. Something isn't looking right. So I do drills. About once a month, for a day or so, maybe even a week if I'm particularly not doing very well, I drill myself on anatomical posing, or shade lighting, or hands, or feet, or hair, or, you know, any of whatever I might be struggling with. A lot of people comment on the way I shade, or they ask me how I shade, and I don't really know how to explain it. When you learn anatomy, it's easy to know where shading should go, because you know where the muscles are and how they work and flex, and I think I'll upload a video on exactly how I shade, like my method behind it, but as far as placement of shading, it gets pretty easy when you learn how to do anatomy. Here's an example of what I'd do for one of my drills, and later I'm going to do a quick anatomy practice with you guys to show my thought process behind how I process references and things like that. But basically, I pulled up a picture from a website that I use that's full of references of people doing different things, and I broke down the shapes for these. I will not link the website as it features a lot of nudity, it's a nude models website for specifically reference drawing, and... I don't know if YouTube would accept that kind of thing, so I'm just not going to do it. I'm sorry. This is an example of my hand drills. I pulled up a bunch of hand references and chose the ones that looked the hardest to do, and then I broke them down and how the muscles in the hands work, and I worked forward from there. If perspective is something that you struggle with, anatomy practices and references are going to be your best friend. If you understand how the muscles work and flex, you'll understand how perspective works regarding arms because you'll know what needs to overlap over something else or what needs to be behind something. It makes it really easy and actually, after learning anatomy, I'm not the best, but after learning it, perspective art has become one of my more favorite pieces to draw. I don't necessarily recommend drilling yourself if you're one of those people who gets burnout from mass producing things or forcing yourself to draw with no inspiration, but I do recommend every once in a while sitting down and practicing what you're not good at. There's no way to improve without practice. For example, my more recent drills that I'm going to be doing, not today, but in the future, is going to be drawing plus-sized and overweight characters. Because I studied only muscular drawings and people, I only learned how to draw muscular skinny people, and that's a big problem because that means I can't be as diverse with my work as I want it to be. So the next couple of drills that I'm going to be doing, again, not in this video, but on my own, is going to be plus size drawing. So get used to potentially seeing more plus size representation in my future work. So now that we've talked a little bit about anatomy, let's talk about references and using them. I've seen a lot of people with this idea in your head that if you use references, you're somehow less of an artist than someone else's, or that it's not real art because you needed to use a specific angle reference to understand how things work. And that simply isn't true. The best artists use references. The Mona Lisa was a reference. He painted a real life person. It's a stigma that really needs to be ended because it really hurts artists who are just trying to figure out how to draw something. References don't make you less of an artist. References are used as a tool to help you learn how to draw something, and it's not a problem. 
I've been doing a series on my Discord, Tumblr, and TikTok where I design soda brands as attractive people. I'm telling you this because I'm going to use one of those pieces as an example of something I used a reference for, and I don't want a lot of comments that are like, are we just gonna brush over the fact that there's a hot man on screen? That's why. It's a hot soda. Don't worry about it. <laughs> this is Dr. Pepper. I used a lot of references when designing him. Aside from the obvious using a can as a reference, I also looked up dreadlock hairstyles and how to draw them. I'm not very well versed in how to draw dreads, but I had a very clear idea of how I wanted him designed and I wanted him to have dreads. So I looked up a reference and thank god I did because if I didn't, he might have looked completely different from how he does now. I think that his hair works really well with the vibe that I was trying to go for and I got to learn how to draw a more diverse hairstyle, so that's pretty cool. So, let's switch over to drawing, and I'll show you what I do. Okay, I've officially gone off script, and also I'm drawing at the same time I'm talking. This is going to go absolutely wonderful. So as you guys can see here, I've pulled up the reference that I'm going to use today. And, um, it's just a man in a swimsuit. This is not normally a pose that I would want to practice, but since I'm assuming that a lot of you guys aren't really well versed in anatomy, and that's why you're looking at this, uh, I've pulled up something that's going to be pretty simple for us to break down as far as shapes go. A lot of people's tips when talking about it talk about head width and, like, measuring and, you know, breaking down into segments, and... While that's good and it's good to know the measurements of things, that doesn't really help people. When they go to draw something, they're not going to want to sit down and measure things out to make sure things are correct. They want to get the basic shape down and then they can do the minor details later. So I'm just going to talk to you about how to break down shapes. So typically when I start out, I would start out here with his head and then I would make a line from the top of the head to the chin and then do a shape similar to that. This is what the head looks like broken down in its basic shape and then you can go even further by that's where the eyes are, this is where the mouth is, you know that kind of stuff. But we're just being simple today. Oops, I drew in the wrong layer. For the neck, this is what I, this is the shape that I normally do. It comes down to where the collarbone is, about here, which gives it a nice easy connect to these muscles right here, and then, you know, the little triangle. These muscles are very important to add, especially if you're trying to draw a character that is um, particularly buff, because these muscles are the ones that you want to outline when doing that because the bigger these are the bigger allowance you have for drawing bigger muscles and bigger pecs. This is the shape that um, the rib cage takes up. About like this. And then this is kind of where the, the pecs come in. This is the way that the arms are. And then there's a little bit of an overlap from the upper arm and the lower arm, and you want to make sure you include that, because that part is where the elbow is. I recommend tracing over your reference. Wow, tracing? What? Yeah, as long as you don't post this and claim that you drew this freehand, then you're fine. But I recommend tracing over the anatomy to actually learn how the shapes are broken down and then use those basic shapes and draw it again, like how we're going to do in a second. This is the torso comes to about here. Don't worry about getting the minor things in, like I just made this a straight line. You don't have to really worry about the way that the muscles come in. Yet. And then, you know, a little bit of a area to show where the crotch part is. The arms and knees, or the arms and legs, have the same exact kind of thing going on where the overlap happens, where the joint is. So the lower leg has the same exact kind of overlap, and that's where the knee is.
hands and feet are the hardest for me. Not necessarily hands anymore, but feet especially. This is how the hand is broken down. And then the foot is broken down in a way that's very similar. You have the toe here, toe here, toe here, toe here, and toe here. The ankle. Did not spend very much time on the feet because I don't want to waste your time. So this, at the end of the day, is the broken down shape. You have the hands, the head, the torso, the legs, and the feet. And those, at the end of the day, are the most important shapes to get down is where everything is and anatomy studying anatomy and stat and studying this form can really help you break down those down so that way you can start freehanding things especially when you start learning how which muscles connect to which so for example this muscle is all one muscle so when you lift up your arm the part that forms your armpit is actually that muscle. Here's the pec, the neck, you know. This is the armpit because this is one muscle. This is the same muscle. There's a muscle here that connects like this. These muscles, which are the abdominal muscle, abdominal, abdominal muscles, and the belly button is placed about there. These muscles are here, and then there's a second set of muscles over here, so when you want to draw a character that's buff, you want to bulge this one out and make these ones a little bit rounder. There's a muscle here, and a muscle here, and a muscle here, that connects to your kneecaps. Everybody knows that this part of the leg actually kind of bulges out a little bit more like that. The hips kind of bulge out a little bit because there's bone there, so you want to add that. The flex of the body there. There's no head. There's no muscle head. Don't know why I said that. That's not true. This is a muscle, and this is a muscle. So your pinky, your pinky has a muscle that connects to it, and that's this part of your hand. And then there's this muscle, which connects to your thumb. And then there's like these fingers. But the most important ones when you're drawing a hand is to define the thumb and the pinky muscles because that's what makes the hand look like a hand. So that's how I would go about starting the basic shape and learning down, breaking down how the muscles go that work in your head. Um, because after that, you can start breaking it down and be like, okay, so this is a muscle, and these are muscles, and these are connected. So, for perspective, you would do something like... This is not a good hand, because I'm not doing my basic shapes. But you would have to do something like that, because that's how the muscles stack on top of each other. That hand's actually not in the right place. But that's perspective, that's foreshortening and perspective, because the muscles and how they stack look like that. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch out real quickly the, um, the basic form of this, and then I can move on to talking about how to break down the female form in a way that makes sense as well. Here's an important reason why references are important to keep up when you're drawing. I was sketching this out and I noticed that he was looking a little bit short, and so comparing him to the reference, his legs aren't nearly long enough, so I'm just going to extend them, and there you go. He's about 
about the same height as the other guy. So, if your sketch is looking a little bit rough like mine is right now, that's okay. It's supposed to. This is your first time doing this, or maybe you're, you've done this a while like I have, and, you know, it's just looking a little rough. This is where the definition comes in. This is where you start defining the muscles and breaking down where the muscles are. So. Alright. So now let's break down things like where the pecs are, where the ribs are, where the bones and things are so that way we can define our shape a little bit more. I'm going to actually switch to my sketch brush for this because I find it easier to define things with my sketch brush or with my pencil brush and my sketch brush. <clears throat> so let's begin. Something that I do that's just part of my style is the muscle connects like this and then has like a little skin flap there. I usually add that in by drawing something like this. And then I add kind of the space where the muscles are and then see where it's connected and bring it down like that. <clears throat> add the middle and the collarbone and then branch out from there. And then this is where you should feel free to exaggerate things as you go forward because you've already broken down the shapes of the anatomy. You now can break those rules a little bit. make his torso long enough. I'm realizing now that his legs were probably short like that because it didn't make his, his torso long enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and expand that and then shorten his legs probably. And I have that problem all the time. I always end up making male, male torsos way too short and that's something that I need to work on, but also that's not really a priority for me right now because I could always just do that and the, voila, there it goes. Perfect length. I also made his neck a little bit long, but that's that's more of a style choice than anything. But I can go ahead and fix that. Once you learn anatomy, the fun part is learning how to break it in a way that you like and the way that you like to do it. Perfect. There we go. There's our man. There's our beautiful, beautiful boy. Um, there's not really much else to say about. really much else to say about this other than congratulations you've learned how to draw a man and I'm lucky enough that I've been doing this for long enough that I don't really have to use a reference when I'm when I'm freehand drawing just like sketches of my characters or things like that sometimes I do that's a specific angle that I've never drawn before but that's why my drills have kind of gone more in the direction of dynamic poses so holding swords and things like that so this is the man all right let me try to remember what color they used for breaking down muscles and things so here i've chosen a reference it's a little bit more complicated than somebody just standing there but it's okay it may be intimidating but it will be fine so um I'm just gonna go ahead and start breaking it down. I'm gonna start with the head like we did last time. I'm actually gonna lower it down because it's just saturated. Okay. And then do the neck thing like we did last time. The neck is going to be more slender. Male heads tend to be wider and larger, and their necks tend to be thicker. Female necks tend to be like longer and slender. More slender. Female ribs tend to be longer than male ribs do because they have to be able to support, um, you know, like their breasts and, um, I don't know if that has a function with kids, but I don't know. I don't know anything. Our arms are 
arms are really skinny and I have a feeling that they were photoshopped because she should have muscle mass here, so... Alright, so female waists are pretty diverse, more diverse than male waists are because of the pinch that happens here, which is a lot of people call the hourglass, um, but it's just muscles. But usually it pulls in a little bit and then comes out when it gets to the hips, which are about here. here, so usually it comes in and comes out. Her hip ends here. Something that's important to acknowledge is that male hips, male, the way that their thighs connect to their groin is a straight line like that. Women's don't tend to, t they come, they tend to have a gap here because they come out like that. Oh yeah, this photo was definitely photoshopped. So this is what the female form looks like broken down. I forgot to add the toes in because I hate drawing toes with a passion. It's probably my least favorite thing to draw. Okay, um, and I forgot one important thing, and that's because I wanted to talk about it, because a lot of artists struggle with it. They usually draw what's called the anime chest, which is something like that, but that's not how breasts work. They should work more like water balloons. They are more of a teardrop shape. And then, of course, they could be pushed up with, like, you know, a push-up bra or something similar to that, but more often than not they are teardrop shaped, and so when she's leaning back, say something like this, this is her, let's say that this is her rib cage, her breasts would fall to the side, like this. May not be flattering, but um, it's anatomically correct. So hers would fall in between this line, which is the sternum. And right about here. Luckily she's got the top of her boob windows, because everybody knows that that's um, really sexy. Seeing the top of somebody's breast. So this is the female form. This is what this particular one looks like, broken down to its bare essentials. And there's some pretty big differences, and also this this photo was more heavily photoshopped than um, the male's one was, so you have to be... That's why I recommend looking up specifically references, because you won't get things that are photoshopped this badly. Um, unfortunately, in the modeling world, things are photoshopped to high hell and back, and it sucks, but that's just kind of how it is. So, um, let's talk a little bit about muscles. The muscles in the males are about the same as the females, so this muscle is still one group. group. This is a muscle. This is a muscle. These are a muscle. Tendons? I think those might actually be tendons. This is a muscle though. You know, things, things like that. There's muscles everywhere. If I took the time to draw every single muscle, we'd be here forever. But that's basically the muscles that you need to be aware of. These ones, these ones, and these ones. So with that out of the way, let's actually do what let's, let's do what we did with the last one, and you know, and draw it.
Okay, so now that I have the basic shape down, let's go through and do what we did before and define the muscles a little bit more and give it just that much more dimension. It's important, it's important to remember when you're studying these how things work in a three-dimensional space. What's my dog? It's important to remember how things work in a three-dimensional space. How is this object 3D? Why is it cylindrical in the way that it is? Is it cylindrical? Is it hard? Is it square? Is it squishy? Is it soft? How does this work? How does this connect to this piece? How does it connect to that piece? And by doing things like that, you will train your brain to look at objects in the real world and think about how you would go about drawing that. Because, in reality, things are just shapes. And I'm sure you've heard that before, but things are, and it's bare mineral, bare minerals, what am I talking about? In its whole bareness, it's just shapes. That's all it is. Just shapes. So if you can draw a circle, if you can draw a triangle, if you can draw a rectangle, a stick figure, you can learn the technical skills needed to draw anatomy correctly. And then, you know, cartoon style. Something that's important to learn is, is that um, it's good to learn anatomy because you should learn anatomy before you start breaking things because you can't really break something that you don't know how, it, like, you know, you can't break something that's already broken. But it's also important to learn cartoonism in tandem with realism. Because if you focus all your time drilling yourself, drilling yourself, drilling yourself on realism and how anatomy works and how realism anatomy works, that's the same sentence. I should really stick to scripts. Um, you, you forget how to draw cartoon style. And that's something that I've found a problem with recently is I've kind of forgotten how to exaggerate and be cartoony and it sucks because I like drawing cartoony so my past couple drills have actually not been anatomy they've been um cartoonism drawing cartoon like way out of the box cartoony way out of the box you know chibis and things like that and it's been really good for me because now I'm learning how to form my own cartoon style based on what I've learned from anatomy and what I've learned from cartoonism. And it's really good to study styles of people you admire to see how they break down anatomy and how they break down cartoonism. So this is our woman. Shoot, her kneecaps are too far down. Okay, so this is our woman. Um, her feet don't look the best because I really don't care about feet today. I'm really, I'm not having it with the foot today, you guys. I guess I should try it a little bit. We came here for an anatomy tutorial, so I might as well try a little bit. You know what? That's as good as you're gonna get. Um, so yeah, let's look at... And then, once you learn anatomy and things like that, you can then learn how to do things like adding hair, adding clothes, studying those things, and, you know, applying that to your characters. How would he look with a scarf on? How would she look with long braided hair or short hair or, you know, things like that. So, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know if you want me to make that shading tutorial and I can do it. Let me know if this helped you. That's really important. If this helped you, please let me know. I would love to know if my way of thinking helped somebody. Uh, let me know if it was entirely confusing and you had no idea what I was saying the entire time because I feel that. Um, my commissions are open and my social medias will be linked down below. I have a Discord, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram. TikTok. I have everything. I got everything. And, uh, keep an eye out for my next video. Don't know what it'll be yet, but it'll be a video, probably. And, um, 
yeah thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see y'all later